Oh no! A mob of angry rioters appeared! What will France do? France used police violence! Not surprisingly, it only made the rioters more enraged! What will France do next? France used Boogeyman! Le Video Games is making lace infants terrible! Everyone became confused! But the riot continues! What is France gonna do now? France used censorship! Social media is banned! Protest is banned! Everything is banned! What? France is evolving! Congratulations! Your France has evolved into a surveillance state. Uh, I guess France just turned into China. Dang it, I should have pressed B. This has been a very interesting, uh, battle. Well, I guess at least they don't have to go to Nurse Joy to heal. I always hated having to go all the way back to fix my Pokemon. I don't know why, but there's something about Pokemon and Country Balls that makes so much sense together. The year is 1967. For frick's sake, where is it? I need to invent GPS already as they stare at a map of Europe back in those days. You can tell because this little blue dot is Berlin. This is fine too, says America as they arrive at Belgium's house. Ding dong, ding dong, of Cummings. Huh? Hi, uh... Belgium. I have to ask you for a favor. I need somebody to take NATO in. He doesn't have a home. Oh, he's cool, but he's still really small with sunglasses. NATO? But M was thought he was live with France. What was happened? Flashback to angry French noises as the French kick out NATO. Some French reasons. I don't know. I don't speak Canadian. Wells, what about you? I want to maintain the semblance of me not being the only country that matters in this alliance. Look, dude, you either take it or leave it. I don't have all day. Okay, I I agree. Is not would be first multinational organization I am at home. Ah, uh, that's what I was gonna say. They're gonna introduce NATO to the EU. The story is actually very similar to how Belgium became the headquarters of the EU also. Can you please be a little bit more quiet while I'm preparing this trade agreement? Chill, bro. If it wasn't for me, you'd be occupied by commies right now. What do you mean? I'm beginning a peace treaty talk right now. What are you gonna do when the commies show up? Just bore them to death about the laws on potatoes? No. <laughs> Oh, they're actually both speaking French noises back to each other. Again, this was the story of how Belgium became the headquarters of NATO and how it is kind of interesting that they're also the headquarters of all the EU. It's interesting because not only are both these massive organizations in Belgium, they're in the same city too, which I guess shouldn't be surprising considering it is the capital of all of Belgium. But interestingly, the root of both of these organizations do tend to handle foreign affairs a bit differently. Since NATO is a military alliance, they're willing to fight Meanwhile, the EU is going to try to do things more peacefully. They also have a lot of other things to do, though, like create laws about potatoes. Had no idea that one of the two official languages of NATO, I don't even know why they need to have official languages, is French and English. The organization requires fluency in one of those languages and a working knowledge of the other. I guess that explains how NATO and the EU can make angry French noises. Viet, I wisdom. Yes, responds Vietnam to Japan. Is cup half empty or half full? I am half empty, says Vietnam. Well, is matter is outlook sees things good or sees them bad. As a Chinese flag comes out of nowhere, of course, China just can't resist taking the waters of Japan or Vietnam. Or actually several other countries, technically. Pretty much if you're any country in East Asia and you have water, uh, China's gonna try to put a flag in it. And they've been doing that for quite some time now. I wonder how the Philippines feel about all this. I think I actually already know the answer to that. The fourth dimension, and here we have an Israel cube. In the third dimension, we have Kazakhstan brick. In the second dimension, we have Imperial Germany. In the first dimension, we have... Uh, who is that? Haha, <laughs> more like the third world dimension. Guys, please, not ouch is sad. Oh, that's actually supposed to be Guatemala down there. They've been banished to the first dimension because fat countries like Canada, the US, and Mexico is all sitting on them. And finally, there's the zeroth dimension. I can sense zero valid claims of independence as the UK looks at a very tiny sea land. What a beautiful cameo from the great and powerful sea land, which is actually just an oil rig. I gotta visit this country one day. Britain has still made no attempts to take Sealand, and the British government still treats Sealand as an independent state. As they should, I might add. Wouldn't be surprised if they're hiding nukes over there or something. So glad Country Balls can teach us about dimensions. What even are those things? Once upon a time, three little Nordics wanted to seek fortune and build their own houses. But one day, an angry Finn showed up, and he was ready to vent. The house of a little Nordic was on Finland's way, and it was made out of Legos. You will not into my house, shouted. 
out in Denmark. So the angry Finn pulled and pulled, and then he launched himself to the house, breaking it down. Denmark escaped to the second little Nordic's house, and it was made out of metal. You will not into my house, shouted Norway. And the angry Finn pulled and pulled, and then he launched himself to the house, breaking it down. They escaped to the third little Nordic's house, and it was made out of cobblestone blocks. You will not into my house, shouted Sweden. And so the angry Finn pulled and pulled, and then he launched himself into the house, but it didn't leave a scratch. Then the angry Finn decided to climb down the chimney to enter the house, but the little Nordic saw it coming and prepared a pot of boiling water for Finland to fall into. Splash! Finland fell right into the pot, and the little Nordics successfully soothed him. What a lovely sauna, the no longer angry Finn said. And they all lived happily ever after, reads Iceland. Wow, good thing we are into living far from those wildlings, says Greenland. Totally, responds Iceland in agreement. This was all just a bedtime story read from Iceland's perspective to Greenland about how uh, weird the rest of the Nordics are. The Nordic family is quite an interesting one, that's for sure. If anyone's going to be the big bad wolf, it would definitely be Finland. Love that Sweden's Minecraft resource is pretty much impenetrable. I'm not surprised. Ah, Norway made their house out of metal because they love metal music. All makes sense now. You little poopy! Things must come to an end by the sacred act of colonial ruling. I will put a stop to this hogwash. You freaking what, mate? Meanwhile, as they slash Brexit, I immediately regret my decision as they sink into the ocean. But Russia witnessed the whole thing? Ah, uh, of course, to become a mighty colonial empire, you just simply need to draw a line on a map. It makes it all real and so much easy. I am think beautiful Z-shape ruling will do trick and make Russia be the might again. Okay, here go. Steady, steady. Ow. Uh, okay, yeah. If Russia was trying to replicate Britain's act of Brexit, I guess they did it kind of successfully in a way. It's a very interesting comparison seeing those two events put together like this. I guess I never really noticed the uh, similarities. Interesting that you have both opposite side of the continents doing something similar like this. Ha ha, I've got the biggest castle of them all, says India. Meanwhile, off screen, someone says, nah, uh, Poland is to having the biggest castle. Meanwhile, again, off screen, biggest castle, I am dice biggest castle, yells Switzerland. And in a way, they are absolutely right. The entire nation of Switzerland is like a giant castle. And that is because this nation is very safely tucked into the Swiss Alps. Keep in mind being this neutral is a two-way street. One party doesn't allow your nation to be neutral for several centuries. You have to also make sure all the other parties want to keep you being neutral. And in the case of Switzerland, that is because nobody really thinks it's worth invading them. Maybe they could do it, but it would be extremely painful. In terms of actual castles though, Poland does have the largest in the world. Now, if only they could extend this to include their entire nation. But holy crap, the one from India also looks pretty epic. How long will this Swiss castle last? I think it's pretty much unstoppable at this point. Hey, Dad, could you watch Texas for a little bit? I've got a poker match at Russia's house. Sure, anything for my favorite son. Awesome, thanks a bunch. Papa, do y'all have any stories about my daddy when he was a kid? I sure do, Texas. Now listen closely. Way back in 1776, when your grandfather still ruled the world, a couple hours later. Freedom! Give me liberty or give me death. Guns. Violence. The Republic of Texas. Your grandfather is never babysitting you again. I have no idea why I thought this was going to be a reference to like no-no America and the Civil War. I thought the British were like putting ideas in Texas's head to uh, to rise up south, things like that. Uh, may maybe, maybe that's where this is eventually going to go. Turns out grandpa was actually pretty good. He was just giving Texas a bunch of pride and stuff. Although they did make Texas pretty crazy. Uh, but Britain was actually just putting in their head independence. Uh, I see how Britain got the revenge. Frick yeah! Today's my birthday. America, I have a gift for you, says Poland. Do you like gift? Oh my goodness. American flags? Capitalism? Hamburgers? Yo, Canada, Poland's become my number one bro. I don't even give a frick about you anymore. Aw, oh, yeah. I always knew this was meant to happen. I feel like over the years, USA and Canada have grown apart. Meanwhile, USA and Poland have become besties. They just really get us, that's for sure. Probably has something to do with our mutual desire 
desire for the destruction of Russia. How to identify most East Asian writing? Also on all, writing system is read like this. So Chinese is characterized by the amount of strokes of smooth wavy lines in a specific order with radicals being building blocks to create more Chinese characters. When comparing simplified and traditional Chinese, simplified looks more simplified compared to traditional, basically more strokes. Then there's Japanese, which uses three writing systems. While one is just Chinese, but Japanese, the other is the main system, which is more curvy and smooth and uses less strokes. Finally, there's Korean to identify it. Look for their vowels, which consist of a stick or two with little nubs or find any large circles. Oh, and then we forgot to talk about Mongolian, which is actually, uh, it's just pain. It's literally just pain. I, I can hear the Mongolian throat singing as I look at this image. Literally talk about images that you can hear. Well, yeah, at least there is one positive. Man, oh man, who thought this area could come up with such different systems? I obviously preferred Mongolian. Out of all of those, Mongolian is the least spoken with only 5.7 million. Meanwhile, Korea has about 80 million. Talk about an absolutely perfect guide just after WW1. Sick man of Europe, shall we feast? Ha ha ha, what's the worst? that could happen. Uh, I don't know if you'd want to put that in your mouth there. <laughs> I am absolutely horrified as both these nations chow away at the Ottoman Empire. I feel like an absolute bollocks. What is happening? You fools, in your greed for territory, you ate from rotted meat. I won't be making the same mistake for another century. You guys have become the dying man of Europe now. How could you let us eat rotten holy meat, says the UK? You know I eat frogs and snails too, right? Oh, yeah, in France's defense, uh, they didn't see anything wrong with it. So after WW1, the French and British did carve up the Ottoman Empire, and in a way, it did kind of briefly turn them into the sick man of Europe. And for the French, I mean, it definitely messed with them because uh, after World War One, they pretty much were just going to kind of go downhill. WW2, they were going to get crushed. They were going to get crushed in Vietnam. They were going to lose a bunch of their colonies. At least Britain stayed alive in WW2, but uh, their empire didn't survive that. I never realized that. Yeah, they, they really shouldn't have ate from the sick man of Europe. Why would you do that? Obviously, we we're going to get some sort of disease. And again, I guess, uh, like the reference said, the U.S. was going to do that too. This is my emblem, says Poland. It's beautiful and strong, just like me. Nay, Poland. Mine is better and also black. Yeah, black just like your heart, they respond. Then here comes America. You stupid. Everyone knows the American eagle is best. Then there's Serbia, although at the other end, Nay, Serbian eagle is best because it has two heads. <laughs> you stupid Westerners. I will show you. The best clays have emblems with two heads. You will cry when I show you who's number one. Meanwhile, two seconds later, in pops Russia. Oh, is that why Serbia loves Russia? They have the whole two-headed eagle thingy, bird thingy, uh, you know, together. Yeah, the other countries aren't very impressed. Don't look at it, Poland, Germany's bird says to them. Ah, it all makes sense now. Let's just not talk about France's emblem. It's like literally a rooster. Although Albania also has a two-headed flying thing. Expectations, Norway says, we are the truest free Europeans. Beware, evil Bork. Meanwhile, Switzerland sitting right next to them in the Freedom Club. Oh no, I can't have them as slaves. Meanwhile, in reality, can we ask for a couple changes? Meanwhile, the EU is just completely ignoring them. Yeah, you guys are gonna have to become members or pretty much just accept all our poop that we decide. Now, silence. This is a reference how both Norway and Switzerland have a special membership inside of the EU, supposedly more free. I mean, I guess technically they're not actually in the EU, but they're a part of the EU single market or the European Economic Area, uh, uh, don't mind this map's a little bit out of date, I think. I just wonder what the British are doing in this comic, just like, uh, drowning. Big thanks to my patrons. I have cloned Drew, and I'm now training him to fight the imposter doing these Subscribe videos. Subscribe to Drew John now. John Denver. Australia is I real. I am not a patron. A fat, no normal, normal Argentinian Chase grandpa. Henson. Amateur archaeologist. Inquisitor. Jack Jack is annoying girl. for Lugs and Bird. Patrick Robert. The Rye, the Pie, the Mexican, And why am I doing this? 